Hello there and welcome to another educative and enlightening episode of AAU Talks, the voice of higher education in Africa. And my name is Adjaman Otradaku. It's a privilege to be on the set on AAU Talks to interview uh, Dr. Andrew Wambua, who's in Kenya, uh, on the future of higher education in Africa. You know, there are a lot of work being done by the African Union and other um, international bodies in partnership to help transform the higher education scene in Africa to a different pedestal. And today in this interview, we're going to be mentioning some of these areas with regards to the future of higher education in Africa and what we should be expecting from it. So don't go anywhere after a quick pause. I'll come back to introduce to you who Dr. Andrew is. All right, so you're welcome back to AE Talks on AE TV. My name is Ajaman Otradako, and I have with me Dr. Andrew Wambua, a Kenyan researcher educator. With me in the studio, we're going to be discussing the future of higher education in Africa. So, Doc, um, let's cut to the chase. Um, how are you doing, and how is Kenya? Thank you. Thank you so much for the wonderful introduction. Uh, my name is uh, Andrew Obua. I am a Kenyan educator and a doctoral candidate at the University of Heidelberg in Germany. My research is on the leading for the University of Heidelberg in Germany. Uh, my research is on uh, leading journalism in schools, uh, uh, leadership uh, in, in schools, uh, learning training uh, programs, which I intend to use uh, to train educators. Uh, learning in Kenya and across Africa. Uh, I am bring pressure to work and I am very happy to uh, meet you in Kenya and across uh, Africa. It is great I am bring pressure to work and I am very happy to meet you in Africa. And some of the opportunities which have always neglected and which we and focus on the challenges and how we can convert those challenges to opportunities. That's amazing. I want to uh, mention that the African Union has had a very ambitious target uh, trying to turn the fit of education in Africa to a different level by outlining in the Agenda 2063 saying that uh, we want an Africa, a prosperous Africa built on inclusive growth and sustainable development. With this premise, we're looking at a great target whereby education, skill development and uh, uh, other areas like health are all well invested into. You are an educator, a researcher in an area as such. What would you say on your observation is the current status of higher education in Africa from your point of view? I, I would say, uh, one, I would like first of all to acknowledge the achievements of uh, African education. Uh, because uh, since independence, that is many decades ago, that is around six decades when Africa, many African countries got independence, yeah. uh, we studied the new institutions of higher learning. But over time, we have managed to uh, grow these institutions to multiple institutions. We have developed research centers, research institutions. Although we are talking about uh, that development, but we are still faced by uh, challenges here and there. But yeah. one thing I applaud African institutions is that uh, the universities have grown in number. We have had many uh, professors in Africa, many research institutions. That is, uh, we are moving towards the right direction, but still much needs to be done when it comes to quality, because we still need to have our manufacturing centers in Africa. We still, have only, we still need, to have, we need to have some of the best research institutions in Africa, which is not the case as of now. Because when you talk about the best research institutions, we are going to the US, we are going to Europe, we are going to Russia. We are not yet talking about Africa. So in as much as we talk about... You know, um, the, 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 the achievements so far are quite arguable because um, comparing our contribution to research, uh, GDP-wise, that's 0.1% against um, the, the Chile's, the US, the UK, which are three, six times much more than we can do. And even the scientists that we produce in our country, uh, quite less than what we have in the countries you mentioned. These are quite steady progresses, but I, I, I don't find them anything we're talking about with regards to how far we've come for decades in higher education in Africa from 1960 to 2020. We are still struggling with uh, quality assurance, funding, 
and resource capacity. But let's come back to the main thing, which is the future. Even though we can wallow in our weaknesses, let us look at the future of higher education in Africa. And I wouldn't want to start from anywhere but our teaching profession. Because higher education as a, a body, as an instrument for transformation, cannot be uh, isolated from the profession of teaching. So from your point of view, what do you see or what is your expectation with regards to the teaching profession in Africa? How should we transform higher education or what should the future be with regards to the way we teach at all levels, even higher education, from your point of view, Doc? Thank you. Thank you so much for such a great question. One thing we have to acknowledge is that uh, the teacher in a current setup yeah. is seen as the authority of knowledge. When a teacher goes to classroom, yeah. it, it, it is assumed that the knowledge is confined. Also, no, he lectures the students. The students are not participants, but they are receivers of, of knowledge. Those okay. are the conventional teaching and learning level, which are trends, uh, which are supposed to be taught in the 20th century. Sure. We are in part 21st century, mm -hmm. and we cannot get out of a problem by using the self consciousness yeah. that took us into it. We need to revise our teaching program. We need to revise our te our uh, teacher education curriculum. We okay. need to revise even our curriculums in our schools, in our primary schools, in our secondary schools. We need to have a progressive kind of teaching and learning, which is more teacher centered. We need to involve the new pedagogies in teaching and learning, which foster thinking skills. And let's talk about thinking skills. I'm talking about it fosters character, it fosters uh, communication, it fosters uh, citizenship. It fosters uh, creativity. Yeah. It fosters critical thinking. Yeah. That is, that is one of the things we talk about. We should, we should be in a position to talk about progressive teaching and learning, which is student centered, whereby we have partnerships between and among the students, between and among teachers, and between and among teachers and students. That is what we should be talking about. Yeah. Let the students be given an authority, let the students be given a space to be creators of knowledge, but mm. not receivers of knowledge. Yeah. Well said. On, on that note, um, let's, let's now talk about the new normal, uh, which is a digitized environment where you need to, like what we're doing right now, um, taking this to our higher education institutions, there was a bit of disparity you now. Um, COVID actually brought out the, the, the weaknesses. We saw how fragile it was in our higher education institutions, how we didn't, the preparation, the lack of preparation with regards to digitization in our institutions. But now it is a must, but this, this is a new way to go. What do you find a bit missing when it comes to revitalizing our institutions with regards to technology and ICT intensity? How, how do you find it? One, I would say that uh, we cannot resist change. The only thing which cannot be resistant, which has never been resistant is change. Uh, we are talking about a new norm, which has been forced by COVID-19. And I can tell you with a lot of certainty that education will never be the same again. We are going to be talking about a blended kind of a teaching where yeah. the digital tools are going to be highly needed and highly in use. The only challenge when we talk about digital tools, especially in Africa, uh, we find that uh, the digital tools as of now can only be uh, accessed by the rich or mm -hmm. by the, the average uh, uh, Africans. Uh, yeah. The marginalized communities, which are the majority in this, are not in a position to access the digital tools. But it's a challenge to all African governments, all African uh, educators to see, to come together and discuss how they can bring about the use of digital tools in our schools because that is something which has happened it is something which we must embrace because the future of learning is blended learning that is we are prior to COVID-19 we were talking about direct instruction but now during post during COVID-19 and after COVID-19 we shall be talking about a blended kind of a learning where the student can even be taught mm -hmm. at his or a uh, uh, 
good place whether mm -hmm. he, he or she is at home he can get education whether yeah. he or she it in, 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 is he, whether he or she is in another place he can get education so the future of education is blended kind of learning so we have to embrace technology we need it or not if we fail to embrace technology then we are going to lag behind we are going to, we're not going to solve the challenges which are facing beyond humanity here among them food insecurity anger uh, global warming those are some of the challenges which you need to uh, solve and the only solution seems to be technology and again my dear yeah. technology so we really need it because the students can be in a position to access all the information they want and mm -hmm. also create partnerships between and among themselves Great. Um, Doc, let me just uh, mention this issue. Uh, you, you know about uh, one of the biggest challenges we have, that our institutions uh, are suffering from a, quite a very, very, let me say, a syndrome, a strong one. That's how it goes. Uh, our institutions produce knowledge, but we can't adopt, we can't adapt, we can't disseminate, and we can't commercialize. This has been there for a very long time, whereby our own researches cannot be implemented in our own country. This is a, like a whole decade issue that we are all struggling from in this uh, continent. From your point of view, you've, I know you've been, you've, you've, you've understood how things work uh, in those, in the industrialized areas, the US, UK, where researchers work, where universities play a huge role in transforming the economy. Do you find that in Africa? And how should this issue be solved if we really look at or we look envisaging a future that we want for our higher education institutions in Africa? Uh, we need to grow our own researchers and use them in Africa. Yeah. The biggest challenge which we are having as of now is that our researchers, we grow them, but they, we, they go to the developed world. And when they go to this developed world, they, are, they get better opportunities yeah. than in Africa. So the, quest, the key question is, how can we grow our own? Yeah. How can we employ them? How can we empower them to yeah. serve Africa? Exactly. Because the, big, the best brands in Africa, they are going to, the, to, to Europe. The best yeah. brands in Africa, they are going to the Europe. The best brands in Africa, they are going to Asia. <laughs> That's so unfortunate. Is, why is this happening? That's the unfortunate thing. So the question is, why can't we come together and discuss because I do believe that Africa is the future and yeah. Africa is very rich. Africa yeah. has all its resources. Actually, is the richest continent as we it, talk of now. So it is. Why should we? See, why should we see the opportunities instead of seeing the challenges? Yeah. And that one now brings us to the question of: Are we working as a team in in our countries and across our countries in yeah. the continent? That is the biggest question because. Sure. Uh, Unless we have an enabling environment for these researchers to work in Africa, we shall continue having a brain drain to the US, to Europe, to Asia, and to other countries which offer better terms. So the thing is, we need to have a city, we need to have a discussion, and a deeper discussion on the future of Africa. When I was reading some articles, I saw one of the agendas, the African Union agenda in 1963, yeah. is to achieve a, a, a secure, peaceful, prosperous, and democratic Africa. Yes. Then, if we continue encouraging the end rate, how are we going to achieve African Union agenda 2063? That's the biggest question. Which yeah. are the system leaders, which all the residents need to talk about. No, the uh, research by ADB uh, tells that we will need a, a one mi a million PhDs uh, in Africa, so we could we could now be the average when it comes to research contribution, which I hope you're one of them. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah, but but you know, looking looking on now, let's try and pull our own together. When it comes to harmonization, as you mentioned, how can we put this together? I know that the Association of African Investors, which since 1963 and uh, 67 was put together to see to the issues of harmonization of higher education institutions in Africa in terms of uh, capability and research, is doing their job. However, some issues of collaboration 
south south collaborations north south collaborations and i want to give east africa a thumbs up that east africa has got an inter-university council that takes care of uh, universities in regards to research and capacity building but i want to find out from you how does it work over there with that council and how they bring universities together at, in east africa collaboration is a big issue when it comes to uh, university education and higher education and even in our schools yeah uh, we our education is more competition based it's okay. more of a collaborative base and that is i bring a research in collaborative professionalism and i would authority authoritatively say that many educators think that they know the meaning of the term collaboration but they okay. are not yet understood it the moment you talk about collaboration we should be talking about sharing power we should be talking about sharing of knowledge mm -hmm. and we should be talking about team working mm -hmm. if we cannot work together mm -hmm. if we cannot uh, share knowledge if we cannot be guided by a shared vision and norms, then we're not collaborating. We, our, our educators, our system leaders, our district leaders, our teachers and our head teachers and even the students need to understand the meaning of the term collaboration mm -hmm. and going deeper, understand deep collaborative cultures. As somebody says, no one is perfect, but yeah. a team can be. Mm -hmm. We need to build that culture of collaboration, working together, because through such a teamwork, if we work together, so much can be achieved. But the challenge which still persists mm -hmm. in our schools and in African countries is competition. Competition, competition is not needed, mm -hmm. uh, especially in our African setup. In our, we need to work as a team. Great. We need to embrace each other. Yes. We need to learn from each other. We yes. need to create a form of knowledge. And on that note, we'll go for a quick pause. When we come back, we'll be having more discussions with Dr. Andrew Wambua, a Kenyan educator and researcher on the future of higher education in Africa. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. When you think of a university, you think of a place where you will go to cut out your future. And when you get there, you realize there's a lot more to it. The beautiful structures, facilities, and ambience. A place where you meet great minds, learn from each other, experience different cultures, as well as master the art of fundamental problem solving. Be part of a whole different study experience with Kampala International University, KIU, Exploring the Heights. Welcome back to the AAU Talk Show on AAU TV. My name is Ajiman Otredako, and we're discussing the future of higher education in Africa. I uh, know that you have keen interest in the future of higher education in the continent you're in right now, and even beyond Africa, you may be looking forward to know what does higher education mean to us and what do we want it to be uh, in, in the unforeseeable time to come. The uh, African Union has the Agenda 2063 that says that the Africa we want. We also have the higher education in Africa we want, which is the future of it. So, Doc, welcome we'll back on this one. I want to quote from a, a referred to Kofi Annan in 2006. He mentioned that universities in Africa, or let's say higher education institutions in Africa, should serve as a primary tool that will strengthen the economies of Africa that will identify or analyze the problems of Africa and provide solutions to them. That will actually equip and provide the adequate human resources we need that is able to change our economy. This statement was made at a UN conference. Today you've heard this, I know you've heard it before, but do you think that what he said is what exactly we're seeing now? And if we don't see in it, how can we tell what the future is for our higher education institutions if this cannot work now? Uh, it is sad uh, because uh, the, uh, Kofi Annan talked about a curriculum which is African based. Yeah. Kofi Annan talked about a curriculum would be there to solve African problems. Sure. But the question we have is curriculum in our schools, in our universities. Because the curriculum which we are using today was uh, done or was uh, 
came about several mm-hmm. decades ago. Yeah. It has existed since the uh, 20th century. We have not even come together to come up with a curriculum which promotes thinking skills. And when I talk about thinking skills, I'm talking about a curriculum which makes our educators, our researchers, our teachers to learn sure. and learn that kind of a curriculum which, have, yeah. which we have always wanted. Kofi Annan was after. But unfortunately, we are not after that. That is why our curriculum, is, as of now, it promotes rote learning. It does not promote thinking skills. And as I said before, talking about thinking skills, I'm talking about a character. I'm talking about citizenship. I'm talking about being able to communicate. I'm talking about being able to collaborate. I'm talking about being creative. I'm talking about being creative thinker. Do we have a curriculum which promotes those thinking skills? I would say no because our curriculum is more of a rote learning. And that's why we are, we are even hiring engineers from the U.S. to come and build our roads. We are buying planes out of Africa. We should have a curriculum which should promote Africa in such a way that it should be self-sustainable. Mm. We should have our own manufacturing farms which are able to manufacture planes. Mm. Our curriculum should be geared in such a way that we have uh, our own best research institutions which can uh, come up with the best medical facilities in Africa. We should yeah. be taking our, 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 our sick people out of Africa to get treatment out of, out of Africa. That is not what Kofi Annan was talking about. Kofi Annan envisioned a curriculum which understands and which answers the needs of African people and the needs of African continent as a whole. Notwithstanding the, 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 the issue of having a, an African center curricula, we're also looking at how technology would be very integral in this. Because when we mention Africa, we, people, think, people are thinking um, that very manual, that's not technology, uh, te- not technology friendly kind of things because we are not so in tune with it. But let's now find an Africa where technology is everything. And I want to take us to the sciences discipline where it's becoming a challenge when you are now trying to study science, chemistry, and the the, the advanced kind of chemistry in a point where you can't have face-to-face in a laboratory. What is the new normal or what should we expect when it comes to science, discipline, medicine, and that? What should technology play or what what role should it play in in this discipline? Uh, one, I would, I would like to start by saying that uh, strengthening science and mathematics encourage more students to pursue STEM related, related careers. I'm talking about STEM, I'm talking about science, technology, innovativeness, and cross course. Uh, these subjects narrows the gap between yeah. demand and supply of existing technical skills which are lacking and ensure as school graduates have desirable skills for the job market. We need to have all manufacturing plants here in Africa. We need to have some of the best research institutions in Africa. And we need to make Africa have a sustainable economy. We need to, we need to promote, because when you look at the science and humanities, they yeah. are very big. Now. Many students take uh, humanity courses, but they ignore the science courses. courses. Sure. How will we have the best research institutions if we do not uh, heavily focus on science subjects? You will not focus heavily on mathematics. You will you do not focus heavily in technology and yeah. engineering. For us to achieve a prosperous Africa by 2063, then we should be talking about having a sustainable economy, which will be brought about by quality and relevant education and that quality and relevant education revolves around a balance between humanity courses and science courses let us promote science let us promote mathematics let us promote engineering let us promote technology because through such we will be hiring our own engineers we will be uh, manufacturing we will have our manufacturing companies here in africa we will not be needing to go to 
Europe or to uh, the US or to Asia to buy uh, what we've been buying before. We need yeah. a sustainable economy which will be brought about by quality and relevant education. You know, Doc, on the issue of um, patronizing our own patent, you know, it's sad that um, Africa actually owns 2% of the world's patents. We only own 2% out of the whole world's patent, which is quite sad. And it, it, it trickles down to how we have invested into tertiary uh, training, vocation, and ed education, even education, uh, technical vocational and education training. This kind of education is very low or let's say the patronage the investment is quite low when it comes to africa the perception is that if you are not a good student then perhaps you now uh, have tvet as an option and not a priority unlike and the african union wants to invest into education and skill development which is the bedrock of tvet education if we were, if you were to now try and then balance or let's say a portion resources into these two education mainstream and skill development would you want to blend them up or you want to say i'll put this amount into skill development and put this into mainstream education what would be your priority for a country like africa and the future we want what should be the priority One, we cannot we cannot ignore Tibet institutions. Yeah. But unfortunately, we have ignored them. Uh, we have seen that uh, even our students are not attracted. Our high school leavers are not attracted to join Tibet institutions. They are yeah. not attractive enough because they think once they join Tibet institutions, there are no jobs. Yeah. The Tibet institutions are not uh, having core. So the thing, why should they join Tibet institutions? Mm. We have created, we are our own uh, problem creators. But now the question is, what can we do to, en to ensure that all the students are well cut out? Because not every student can go to the university. Not every student can join Tibet institutions. But we need to cut up for all the needs of our students. So we need to upgrade and equip our Tibet institutions with enough and qualified teaching force. Okay. as well as enough infrastructure so as to attract talent as of now tibet institutions are not as attractive as they should be yeah. the narratives need to change yes partnerships and internships need to be needed mm. our youth need to develop entrepreneurial skills and innovative mm. ideas as fast changing world will require a balance between employers and employees Great. We need our students to go to universities and yes. a holistic society. Mm -hmm. And right now, if you look for somebody to come and uh, do those jobs uh, which are needed from a tertiary institution, you don't find them. Because all of them, they want to go to the university. Yeah. They want to go and get degrees. Mm -hmm. what? So, so uh, looking at such a scenario, it seems that we have messed in all of your areas. Yeah. And that one calls to all the system leaders, it calls all the uh, middle level leaders, and it calls all the school leaders to come together, to work together with Tibet. How can we improve our Tibet institutions? Because again, they have to attract talent. And for our students to go to these Tibet institutions, they have to be attracted. They don't need to be forced to join them, but yeah. they have to be attracted. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I want to add one more thing um, to what you just mentioned. You know, employability is one huge um, challenge when it comes to higher education institutions right now, where students go to universities and uh, cannot get jobs. And in, uh, the industry says that we are not having the skills that we need. And this has been going on for a very long time. We wonder, what does industry want? And if industry has any requirements, they should liaise with the universities and make sure that we, the product or the students, have what it takes or the graduate have what it takes to fit in industry. But the war between industry and academia has gotten students a bit stranded when it comes to employability. Uh, do you think there's a need for a much stronger collaboration between industry and academia, whereby industry would now partner universities to their standards 
industrial figures will now have a huge role to play in university so that employability doesn't become a problem but becomes our requirement we take part industry takes part in a university training so that graduates have already what it takes to be in industry do we need something of this sort with the kind of future we want for our higher education institutions in africa We, we need a deep collaboration, actually. Not just okay. a collaboration, but a deep collaboration between the industry and our academic institutions. Uh, because, uh, unfortunately, our universities, the kind of the graduates which they are producing, they are producing uh, uh, graduates without practical skills. And that, 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 is, that is the issue. Come up as a, as a, that is the issue. Yeah. Our graduates are getting out of our universities without practical skills. And actually, once they are hired by these industries, they have mm -hmm. to be retrained again. Exactly. Why? During the course of learning, they never had attachment. They okay. never, because if they could have attachments with these industries, then in the process of their learning, they would have developed deeper skills, deeper knowledge on what they are supposed to do mm -hmm. in the job market. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, our, our, the way your education is structured, our students, go to the universities, they read, they learn, they cram, they develop a rough kind of a learning, and by the time they get out of the universities, there's a very big gap between yeah. the practical and the theory. Yeah. The so we need to bring the industry together. That's why when you look at the developed world, talk about Germany, talk about South Korea, talk about the US, the university uh, students are in a position to get attachments in this industry so that they may develop uh, those skills which are needed. Yeah. And uh, here in Africa, even if we have those kind of attachments, they are not, uh, they, they are a short term kind of attachments. Actually, mm. many of them go up to three months. Three yeah, months three months. Is enough to equip our students with the needed skills in the industry. We need True. a kind of attachment like at least a year, whereby even the okay. students can go, yes. uh, can, can continue learning while he or she is working. Sure. What is happening in the developed world? Sure. When you go to the developed world, students don't, don't do a full-time study. Students are working at the same time they are, they, they are studying. And okay. that is how we can promote the practical in our learning institutions. Mm. Well, it's been a wonderful discussion with you, Dr. Andrew Wambua, and your insights are just amazing regarding the future of higher education in Africa and what we look forward to. Believe me, the African continent should be able and the unforeseeable times come to have universities that are able to produce knowledge adopt the knowledge to adapt it to disseminate it well and also to commercialize very well in our own continent and which doc you've mentioned that yes we need to understand our continent understand our university and now create curriculums that understand the continent so that students wouldn't be a liability, but would be great assets to this continent. Doc, do you have any closing words or remarks you want to put out there before we wrap the show up? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate it. it. Has been a very engaging talk, and I would say that is not it is not uh, the final one, but it's just like the start of yes. many conversations which you are going to be holding. Uh, I would say that the African Union 2063 agenda that sure. about being secure, peaceful, prosperous, and democratic Africa will only be realized through quality and relevant education that answers the needs of an African people. Africa needs to be sustainable with the premier schools, with the premier colleges, with the premier universities, with the premier research centers, and with the premier manufacturing plants. Sure. We need to, pos to position ourselves for the future because Africa is the future. Yes, and I look forward to that great future of Africa. Thank you very much for your time, Dr. Andrew Wambua, Kenya, and from Kenya. I'm so glad that you also had time to watch the show and uh, your contribution thus far towards the show. My name is Ajima Chudak, and this is AAU Talks on AAU TV, the voice of higher education in Africa. Keep watching our programs and have a nice day. Bye.